uh, video suits this piece because because you can actually watch it. Uh, uh, I think it's very hard to, to enact a piece in front of an audience uh, with the spotlight on, but they did a good job. I agree. Mm -hmm. But I think it was it was also very interesting how you could feel these dynamics kind of unfolding in real time. So maybe that was something that got added, or do you not agree? Uh, well, it's about male bonding, uh, uh, and I think women probably appreciated more than men because they could see, they could see the, little, the ploys that men have. Yeah, and also I, to me it, it seems about male bonding that happens through almost through violence or through kind of aggression. Uh, well, um, well, men make love to each other uh, by giving jibes to each other. <laughs> Uh, women have problems ac actually communicating, uh, communicating uh, through semi-aggression, but of course uh, it's changing a lot. I saw actually when I when I, I saw the, the one I went to the the, the hockey rink uh, in in Yale that Sarnen did, uh, and uh, when I was there there, were, there was a, a girls hockey team uh, playing other girls in the high school level. Uh, they were vicious. Get, they, it's getting very vicious now in America, and the fathers were there cheering them on. Uh, so. This is a kind of a sport, a sport situation, uh, but um, I, I want to give uh, give my influences. Um, uh, there are two. W uh, one, one was one was a, a science fiction writer uh, f from England, Brian Aldiss, who wrote a book about a bit called Cryptozoic. It's about time going backwards. Uh, um, uh, this may or may not be actually true, or, or maybe just a, a kind of schizophrenia. We can't tell for sure, uh, but. Um, uh, but also Gregory Bateson, a, a great psychologist, linguist, English, who was married to my heroine, Margaret Mead, and he had a theory about schizophrenia called the double bind theory of schizophrenia. The idea is that if, if you're told to do one thing by a father figure, or pro, uh, perhaps a mother figure, but then, then she also wants you, but if you do that, uh, and that goes against an, another command that she give, that he gives to go in the other direction. Uh, a favorite fa uh, that's called double bind theory of schizophrenia because you don't know which way to go. Um, uh, but um, um, in terms of a performance idea, it seemed to be very ideal as a performance idea. I have a very favorite favorite artist from San Francisco, Howard Freed, and he did a piece. He did a piece where he asked different golf pro pros uh, to give him advice. Uh, about how to make a swing, and they conflicted with each other. Schizophrenia was really talked about a lot in the 60s. In fact, R.D. Lang, uh, the great psychologist, uh, won, won people to really get into schizophrenia, uh, to, to get out of the schizophrenic situation. But of course, that's what acting is about, uh, to get away from psychological problems, maybe art also. But do you also think that it's like, in a weird way, a very simple way of, of demonstrating the relationship between two people that exists. Like the, the, the piece is somehow schizophrenic, but you see each of those people more clearly somehow very from this instruction. Uh, well, that's a very humanistic point of view. Uh, but do we, ever, do we ever know who we are or who other people are? But basically it's a theater piece, but it's about real people. It, in a way it's very American uh, because um, uh, on TV programs uh, like reality shows, uh, people people pretty much uh, uh, pretty much are themselves. Um, uh, and uh, uh, but there, in the sixties, there were many psychological psychological theories. Um, for for ex for, exa for example, um, uh, in California, uh, probably every month there was a new psychological uh, 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 therapy therapy approach. Uh, one you probably know because Sean because. Uh, John Lennon was very, and Yoko Ono were very involved with it, was the primal scream. In other words, you have to scream in a primal way uh, to, to, get, get close, to, to get close to when you were born, and you had this great scream as you came, in, came into the world. Uh, all these things were supposed to cure you, uh, prob probably within a week or two, but then a new, a, a new, new, ther a new kind of th fake ther therapy came in. Scientology uh, uh, made a business out of the, the, this, the, this, 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 kind of, this kind of psychological help. Now, Dan, do you also think that something that occurred to me is that it's a very simple formula, but also produces something like what a classic aspect of humor is, which is it produces non sequiturs constantly? Uh, absolutely, I love cliches and non sequiturs. Uh, um, in fact, I think all the great art is about humor. Um, um, is there a relation between humor and schizophrenia? Do you think? Uh, well, slapstick. Slapstick is pretty. Is pretty child. Uh, is, is is maybe like when you're beaten up by your uh, your mother uh, slaps you, uh, and you get slapped down. There's a great song by Arthur Godfrey 
uh, one of my heroes from the, from the 50s, uh, he, uh, called, and the song is Slap Her Down, Down Again, Pa. Uh, it, it, it's about a father talking, a father talking to his wife, and, and the, uh, the daughter comes in very late, and he says, Slap Her Down Again, Pa. Slap Her Down Again. Um, I think all these things come from kind of chi child, uh, childhood interactions, uh, but um, I think you got the humor. Because uh, certainly all the work I do is about humor, anarchistic humor, by the way. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I also think that it was, uh, for me, it's just very interesting for someone to be working on what a lot of people refer to today as intersubjectivity, like the space in between two subjects. And like you say, maybe you can never know one person except for how they're somehow emergent in an intersubjective situation. Well, that's quoting from, uh, from some interviews of mine where I talk about intersubjectivity. When I was 14, I read Parts of Being and Nothingness by Sartre, and the Muir Sage, which Lacan, uh, Lacan actually read it, and, and the Muir Sage is about the, the child getting a first sense of itself as an ego as they're seen, uh, uh, as, as they're seen uh, gazing at other people gaze at them. And my, my work uh, is not sculpture. Uh, uh, with two-way mirror glass, you can see people on either side looking at each other, and there's an intersubjective space. And, and of course, uh, of course, it's like projecting onto somebody, and they project onto you. Uh, I, I guess that's 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 pretty much where, where my work begins, the pavilion work. But this is an early theater piece that, that expresses the same thing. I'm not an actor, and I, I don't do dance, but I just had this. You could call it a conceptual idea for for a quickie piece. No, but I think it's amazing how the instruction is so simple. You can read it in two sentences and it just produces. And when you told me that you don't want them to do it before, I thought to myself, well, what that, what's that going to reveal? But then when they do the instruction, actually, it, it kind of produces the same thing as I've seen in the video copy from 1972 and then from the other Listen Gallery, one that was more recent, about 10 years ago, I think. So it's somehow quite stable, maybe because it's based on instruction. Uh, I think you're, looking, you're, you're, you're dealing with two pieces, uh, Lax Relax, uh, the other, the piece I also want, wanted to possibly show was a piece I did um, a few years later in the early 70s called Lax Relax. Um, uh, there's a video of it. It's um, um, and now now it's very it, it's um, uh, 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 I've pre-recorded uh, a woman saying lax, saying lax. She breathes in and breathes out lax, and then I'm with a tape recorder. A microphone and tape recorder listening to the tape recording and I say relax it's like it's a little it's a little like you're hypnotizing yourself and the audience is also starting to breathe in and breathe out uh, and um, uh, but it's like Steve Reich's piece phasing so it's all all about all about phasing it, it's also uh, has some connotations of, 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 of kind of sexual interaction between uh, a man a man and a woman or maybe a man and a man and of course, it relates to yoga, uh, because it's all about breathing in and breathing out. Again, this comes from this 1960s California idea, uh, which eventually became a kind of yoga exercise. But it also, also involves the audience. Uh, past, future, split attention doesn't really uh, involve the audience. So I really prefer lax, relax. Also, it's relevant now. But on the other hand, this is a pioneer work you saw uh, reenacted. I don't like to reenact pieces, uh, but I prefer this to my very popular performance audience mirror. Uh, which uh, you originally you wanted to do. There are great videotapes of that, uh, but um, uh, past future, in a way, is more har hardcore, as we say. What, what made you? What makes you prefer today to performance audience mirror? Why is it more hardcore? No, uh, I simply, I, 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 I just think lax, relax. I've done many, many times at the listening gallery and afterwards. It's a great piece, but it needs a kind of intimacy. Whereas this is more theater, we're in England now. Theater is very important in England, uh, also particularly in Ireland. So I think to make this into a theatrical piece rather than just just a, a, a just a kind of very inf informal exercise piece makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, I also feel like in, in, in this space, somehow we wanted to bring things that worked um, on what you, you know, intersubjectivity, and, and I think that that had a large influence on a lot of people. So for us, it's also like a tip to this piece. But what I was thinking is, were other people other than Simon Forti people from art, but not necessarily always, always from dance, which is the context that usually gets mentioned around the time you made this, did they also, did, did influences also come from art as opposed to um, conceptual dance? Well, I wanted to be an artist writer, uh, actually. Uh, everybody I knew in the art field, I knew nothing about art. I didn't go to art school or university. 
but I was reading a lot of science fiction. Smithson, who was in my gallery, liked pulp science fiction. Uh, he liked Ballard, Ballard, but he liked the kind of pulpy, pulpy uh, Burroughs stuff, whereas I liked the intellectual stuff. Uh, mainly mainly Brian, Brian Aldiss, uh, a little bit of Ballard, uh, and uh, Philip K. Dick. And Philip K. Dick, who was my favorite American writer, I think was on the edge of being schizophrenic. Not to say that I'm not, not, in, in, the same, not in the same category, but that had a lot to do with LSD. Uh, you and the Beatles, uh, they did a lot of LSD. Uh, I don't recommend it. Uh, uh, I don't recommend it, uh, but the whole idea of an enlarged time situation, my friend Rodney Graham, uh, who I kind of discovered when he did a piece with a big generator uh, uh, um, uh, in a ravine which had a flash of light, I realized that that was better than Michael Heiser because the generator had a kind of a, a sound and a flash of light. I thought that was Canadian, but in an interview we did, he said it had a lot to do with, with, with Lamont Young and sine waves. There's a, there's a favorite group of mine, the Feelies, who have two drummers, uh, and the sound is like John Cale, Velvet Underground, uh, and with the feeling that you get is an extended feeling of, of present time. So this piece is basically about time that you saw. It's not just about schizophrenia, it's about a kind of an enlarged, strange, strange sense of time. Uh, of course, that can go back to physics. I don't know, not, know anything about physics, but we used to read, because we didn't have any books, we would go to paperback, paperback, paper, paperback um, book shops, look at the paperbacks, and get some, some kind of weird, uh, unprofessional idea about quantum mechanics. <laughs> and th that, that's that how figure, science fiction begins, by the way. Is that what you mean when you say figure eight of past and future, like a figure eight loop? Uh, well, the figure eight loop is because it's a feedback loop. It's called cybernetics. And that began, by the way, in the 60s with the, great, with the, with the, with the, with the idea of topology. Which is uh, topology was actually actually what Lisha, Lung, uh, Lisha Clark was doing, and also Kiesler. So in the 60s, we all were very interested in these kind of mathematical topological feedback loops. I wouldn't say it's one thing or the other. Cybernetics is the buzzword now, but I think we're more more interested in the whole idea of topology to begin with. I was just in Brazil doing a piece uh, uh, in Lino Barbari's factory, and Brazil had this wonderful uh, wonderful artist, uh, Lisha Clark. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, it's hard to get a hold of her work be because because um, uh, because basically you see in museums uh, wor work that she, she she work that she did is con kind of kind, kind of sculpture co constructed sculpture but actually you, you can, uh, actually it was all about the the the, the per spectator themselves experiencing the, being inside the work like being inside a womb so my work is di directed toward the spectator not the performers. So my work is really against this idea of the spectacle, which I'm afraid is coming back uh, in, into art. Uh, I won't mention names, but everybody's doing spectacle. My work was, was basically kind of learning exercises uh, for students, students in art school, because all my early work in video were actually learning experiences. Uh, um, maybe it's because my mother, mother major, her field was educational psychology, uh, and um, the idea, the, the idea of, ex of doing exercises to, to, ex to expand your mind was pretty important in the 60s. Uh, but the, what we have now, uh, what we have now is just spectacle for the sake of spectacle. So I hope this is just more fun than spectacle here. I thought it was a fun, I don't know if it was a spectacle because it, what produced it to me seemed s somehow algorithmic and like if you if you just let an algorithm produce something it's almost like you can't control how big or small the thing that comes out is so like I was struck that sometimes it was actually quite small things or small current or something and then other times aggressive no that that the important thing is, is a microseconds in other words when these when somebody uh, somebody t predicts the future the other person the other person re it's a bad bad future the other person reacts very quickly uh, 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 but by doing a kind of a, a put down answer and that, that means time is very, is very c compressed. Or you can go into the far distant future uh, or the f uh, distant past. So it goes back and forth, contracting and, and, and reducing itself. It's a whole idea about time. I think some way this has to do with quantum me mechanics, but I was very bad at physics and mathematics. So I can't use, I don't even know what a, a, a logarithm is. Uh, do you, it's, it's beyond my understanding. But do you mean when you say it's related to quantum mechanics that it's related to the uncertainty principle or something? Uh, that's, cor that's correct, as much as I understood it. That's Heisenberg. Heisenberg, of course, uh, people don't like him anymore because he was, he was a Nazi. On the other hand, I think he might have been smarter than Einstein. I'm Jewish, and I grew up uh, with Einstein as a hero. 
because and we had we always had saw images of Einstein going like this. Uh, maybe he was a kind of Jewish comedian, uh, like Jerry Lewis. Uh, but in fact, in in fact, something very interesting you don't know is uh, San Francisco, which had the Ann Halpern Dance Group, uh, uh, which is a, uh, which was it was in the early sixties. Ann Halpern. Uh, w w w was a person interested in, in, in dance, and she had all these ar artists, like Bruce Nauman, uh, musicians like Steve Reich, dancers like, like Simone Forty, get together uh, in, in a group, and, and uh, in a kind of group psych therapy, uh, they, they would do exercises, which are just exercises in motion. Uh, it wasn't, they didn't call it dance. Uh, it was like an exercise in motion. And many people were drawn to San Francisco, like Bruce Nauman, he ma majored in physics and mathematics. They were drawn there because Richard Feynman, the great physicist, uh, was, was giving uh, lectures about phys physics and gravity and playing bongo drums. A a and uh, I know that Simone's work, when I first met Richard Serra when he came to New York, he said he was deeply influenced by Simone. Because in other words, the work was about gravity. So there were, there were all these ideas of physics. Uh, the, the interest now in cybernetics is a real misunderstanding of the period. We had so many different things that were interested at the same time. So I made, I, out of that confusion, I tried to make a few pieces. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but um, I hope we didn't over-rehearse this. <laughs> I don't think we did. <laughs> but I wanted to ask one last question, which is that I, I never made this connection between the two drummers in the Feelies and this and this piece, but somehow now I think like, if, if I got you right, it means like the two drummers coming in and out of phase somehow is related to this. Oh uh, huh? yes, and what you hear when you hear the feelies and, and early television is you hear, the, and, and Lamont Young, who, by the way, I did Lamont Young, when I did Esper Magazine, I did a Lamont Young piece uh, in, in a flexidisc. What you hear is the music, uh, things coming out of your head, but also out of the architecture itself. Uh, so, uh, so in a way, it was a kind of a, a physical space that was both acoustical and, and, and had to do with the architecture. And, and also had, and the two drummers, the two drummers, uh, with, well, I, th I think John Kiel comes out, comes out of Lamont Young, and the feelies actually come out of pop music. It's a, it's a, they're, they're from New Jersey, uh, and I think in, they still do pop music. Uh, the last album, the last CD was pretty good. They retired. They live in suburbia, New Jersey. Uh, uh, they're married with kids. Uh, but they performed for me when I had my retrospective uh, in, the, in the Whitney. Unfortunately, it was done outside in, in a kind of outside court, courtyard, but it should have been, it should have been electric, uh, a guitar, and it should have been inside. Uh, but of course, you can't recreate these things uh, in any way, but the, but the CD is, is, is pretty good. It's called uh, uh, here, here Again, I think. Yeah, I think I remember seeing them at the Whitney at your retrospective. I think temperamentally, Dan, you have... Um, like you have trouble, I think, sometimes accepting uh, that that you are an extremely influential figure for our generation, at least people around my age and younger. So I just thought, since we're together, we we talk quite often, but we don't talk in public. I thought it would be be for me nice to just say that, like, I'm really happy that you came all the way from New York here and did the piece, even though I think maybe it was in a way a little bit more theatrical to do it live. But for me, there was something about that embodied liveness that no, was good. I, I did it for my friend, my friend Asada, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, uh, my, my wife, who's Japanese, calls him Masada. Uh, we're, we're great friends. By the way, he's a great writer on, on tennis and could easily be a tennis pro. I don't know about that. But so I, I want you to comment on the Wilmington. Yeah, no, I think we're all really happy, right? We're, we're, we're all happy. We're all very, very happy a bit about Britain being somehow, not England, but Britain being somehow affirmed, right? This is like the, the act of union being reaffirmed. I think that's a very political statement because it, it looks like uh, the, the Scottish people I talk to are worried they won't have a country anymore. They won't have a passport. On the, on the other hand, I don't think David Cameron would understand, understand this talk. <laughs> I, I saw on television, he went on vacation and apparently he, he forgot his passport. He's a normal guy, he has three kids, they go on vacation and he's so concerned about his family that he forgot his passport. Do you think that Manchester music had a big influence on your work, or only as, as a music fan? Uh, well, to bring in Manchester, when I did Rock My Religion, the film, it was bright, done on the shoe, shoestring. I had no money. It was, I, I, it was, it's a feminist piece, uh, and I'd done uh, many works of, uh, dealing with feminism. I wrote an article called New Wave Feminism for Screen Magazine, uh, but Mary Kelly asked me to do it, and it was turned down because I compare 
I compare uh, the raincoats, Lydia Lunch, uh, the slits, uh, to the theories of uh, the French uh, Julia Kristeva and, uh, and the idea of the, uh, the, uh, Julia Kristeva, and they turned it down because they w didn't want to embarrass uh, the, uh, these people who studied L Lacan or L Lacan uh, uh, with with rock and roll. So uh, when I met, so I, I want to make I want to make a film. Uh, uh, I saw a film called Rude Boy about the Clash by Jack Hazen. Uh, there's a lot of documentaries around, uh, like uh, like uh, like the one on, on Bob Dylan, uh, and I thought a documentary would be great. Uh, I'd written many articles, and I wanted a f female heroine. So I didn't really know much about Patti Smith, but Thurston Moore lived downstairs from me, and he had all the files, uh, all the files on, uh, on Patti Smith. So I ransacked the files. I made her into a heroine. She'd retired, by the way. Nobody knew too much about her. Uh, but uh, in the, fi in the beginning, uh, beginning of the film is about Anne Lee, the founder of the Shakers from Manchester. Uh, and um, uh, I actually uh, bought a cheap. Uh, I, 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 bought a, I took, a, took a flight to London, uh, t t took my t a cheap Super 8 camera uh, to, Man to, the, uh, where, to Manchester. At the edge of the city, there's an industri in, industri industrial ar archaeological park. Uh, where, uh, which was the, 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 the fir in a way the first mill of the Industrial Revolution. I videotaped it. It's in very bad shape in, in Rock My Religion because I didn't have it, because it wasn't stored properly. Uh, but of course, Manchester has been very important for me. Uh, um, John Peel introduced me to the Fall. I saw them when there were only ten people in attendance, and people and punks was spit on them. And I saw the last Joy Division concert in in England uh, uh, after Ian Curtis had died. Uh, so. Manchester is quite special. I don't, but I, also London is pretty special. But I also like the specials from Birmingham. <laughs> Do you think Anne Lee? Uh, obviously, rock and roll is my religion. So Anne Lee is a very interesting figure, also being from Manchester, but having moved to America and started the Shakers. But I had an interesting thought when you were saying that, which is, or at least for me, it was interesting. Do, is, do you think Anne Lee was schizophrenic? Oh uh, no, Anne, Anne Lee was a very sensible person. Uh, um, uh, basically, she was she was a uh, she was a Quaker, and Quaker Quakers would, would uh, 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 she had many children who who died in infancy, uh, and she thought as a, as a, as a proto feminist, the 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 worst the big curse that that, uh, that 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 was inflicted on women is that children would die in infancy or go into work in the mills and die very young, so her idea was to set up a situation. Uh, where there would be celibacy, celibacy, when men and women would be equal, but they wouldn't have sexual intercourse. But at the same time, there's a great book called Seven American Utopias by Dol Dolores Hayden, and it documents in America all the people who came to America uh, who, were, who were fighting against the nuclear family and the patriarchy. Uh, in Oneonta, so the Shakers, Shakers didn't have sex, uh, whereas in Oneonta, another community nearby, Every, every people had men and women in the community would have sex with different partners every, every night. So in other words, it was a utopian American idea, it, which was proto-feminist. Dolores Hayden has written also a great book called New Domestic Landscape. N sorry, New New New, New uh, the the uh, uh, the the domestic revolution because in the late 19th century, American women uh, re reorganized the kitchen, uh, so it would be so so it would be beneficial to women. So in other words, it's kind of utopia. America was a kind of utopia. And, and as a, I got into feminism because I read Margaret Mead when I was 13. I looked at the b pictures of naked women, but she's a real, a real idol for me. Uh, so uh, it was very hard to be a feminist uh, in the 90s because it became politically correct and absolute bu academic bullshit. Uh, but uh, but um, it's, um, it's an important moment because in America, during d Eleanor Roosevelt, the, w the wife of, of President Roosevelt uh, w was a lesbian and a feminist. She start, but she started. She actually started the United Nations. Uh, they they had separate houses. Um, uh, but um, in the 40s, where I grew up, the end of the 40s, women were actually liberated. What happened in the 50s uh, was uh, women had to go back into the kitchen, and it was a kind of a nightmare situation. Um, of course, we we like in, Amer in America, we like to think men and women are equal. Uh, to a certain extent, that's true. And how would the piece be different if it was two women? Um, well, I'm a man, so I'm interested in, in, in male bonding. In fact, Kim Gordon, when she first came to New York as a student, she said, Dan, I'm a Taurus. I can only be too close to people, women, people psychologically and be a helpmate, because that's what it said in the book for Tauruses. 
I said, well, Freud was a Taurus, and he was one to be very, he was very close to people and one to help them. You should be a writer. So I'd written this article, New Wave Feminism, and she wrote an article called Trash Drugs and Male Bonding, which I got in, into Real Life, Real Life Magazine. Tom Lawson, uh, uh, I encourage you to be a writer. Uh, and um, uh, of course, of course, uh, sh uh, of course, she was interested in the fact that a girl could be in a rock group and be very close to male bonding. And what I like to new way feminism is I can identify with sexuality of women together bonding. So that's pretty exciting. Um, in other words, I really think the the art star by himself, by him or herself, is kind of a stupid idea. But what I like is the kind of bonding situation that takes place. It doesn't have to be Gilbert and George. I think I, I think. What I like about art schools is people start their own galleries uh, and they bond together. And of course, of course, when you're in school, all my early pieces were, were for Nova Scotia College of Art, they were about learning process. They were not about a spectacular video. You can read about them in my, my, my book, Video Television Architecture, which has just been reprinted by Lars Muller. Um, but any, anyway, uh, you asked me too many intellectual questions. Assad is an intellectual. <laughs> okay, I'll stop asking you intellectual questions. But I think that's actually also a good place to stop because mm -hmm. the idea of bonding between people somehow is, I think, also very deep in the piece, even though you, you would say that's probably a humanist point. So, um, Well, I'm not putting down humanism. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I began as an anti-humanist. Uh, uh, in, 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 in the beginning of, of minimal art, uh, Solowit had, had a good idea. He said his first works were jungle gems for his cats, uh, and and uh, be because this I humanistic idea of art, which is sh which some galleries promote, uh, is not my idea. Uh, Saul loved Celine. Uh, in later years, he became humanist, uh, but of course, uh, of course, um, of course, to me that was too Renaissance uh, humanism. Uh, of course, my hero is Leonardo da Vinci, a fellow Aries, uh, and Goya. Mm -hmm. Uh, whereas my wife's hero, hero is, uh, is, is Michelangelo. So you can pick your heroes. Thank you so much, Dan. That's it.